Hello folks, I'm your host, the Dynamic Crip, and this is Comic Fever. And today on Comic Fever, I have the spoiler and non-spoiler reviews of Secret Empire number 6. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. So, let's see here, what do we have here? Alright, for the non-spoiler review, we have writer Nick Spencer, penciler Lionel Francis Yu, uh, our anchors Jerry or Gary, Alanquilin, I just messed that up, uh, and Lionel Francis Yu. Uh, colorists are Sunny. It's either Sunny Jiho or Sunny Go. Uh, we'll go with Sunny Go. Uh, in Hava Tartaglia. Letterer is BC's Travis Lanham, and cover art is Mark Brooks. The art and storyline has been great. Uh, it's been a great use of light and dark. Not only in the art itself, but you can even hear in it the tone of the storyline. Uh, you feel the bleakness in some areas, while others you feel a sense of hope encompassing the whole story uh, storyline. Um, the best art that I would have to say is Dave. Uh, this is giving away very little of the story, uh, but they've just unleashed. Hydra has just unleashed. Uh, Um, the Hulk on its enemies, and this is the uh, this is the best art in the book, I think. Uh, but It's, uh, it was a great storyline, and it's been great so far, so it's definitely worth picking up. It's definitely worth reading, and it will be, it is a beautiful book to look at. Um, with that being said, it is Secret Empire number six, spoiler review time. If you've lasted this long, you are now in the spoiler review part. Okay, so, if you wish not to, though, go on with this part, then I'll see you on the other side. Um, now, on to the spoiler reviews. Uh, review, rather. Okay. And this one, I've kind of, uh, well, they do this in the book, too, uh, I've split them up so we know who's who and what's and what. So, Hydra Command is, I've dubbed him Captain H. America. Uh, Madam Hydra. Uh, Arnim Zola. And that's Hydra Command. Hydra Avengers are the Scarlet Witch, Odinson, and Vision. The Underground consists of Tony Stark, AI, Ant-Man, Hercules, Sam Wilson, Wilson, Rayshon Lucas, Giant-Man, Quicksilver, Mockingbird, and Hawkeye, and The Thing. Dark Force New York is Claire Temple, Doctor Strange, Cloak and Dagger, Daredevil, and Kingman. Finally, the Red Room consists of Black Widow, Wasp, Spider-Man, 
Viv Vision, Ironheart, and the Falcon. Okay, well, we found out in the last issue in this new world where Steve Rogers had found himself in, he has also been home to none other than the Red Skull. Uh, we open this book with Steve Rogers and one of his friends, the only one that was left alive, hanging upside down in a cave with Red Skull as he begins to interrogate the man, asking if he has seen her. The man hanging says, The goddess, yes, yes I have. You must let me go. I must save her. As the stranger admits this, the Red Skull cuts him down and drags him off. Uh, saying, no one can help you. Uh, only he can. Kind of just cuts him down and... Uh, and drags him off. We transition over to Dark Manhattan, or Manhattan. Manhattan over in the Dark Zone. Uh, Claire Temple is beginning begging Dagger to use her gifts just a little longer to, cl to help Claire see what she is doing. Claire injects Dagger with something. Cloak asks what it is. They're ejecting in her, and it never, and it's never said. It just, uh, Claire just implies that it's some sort of medicine to help Dagger with the pain as she illuminates. All Claire replies with is, it's, "With is we are got our best doctor working on it. We got our best doctor working on it in the same place." But another part of it, Doctor Strange is at a library of sorts, where a thing known only as the librarian asks why he is there. Strange replies that he's looking for a spell, a spell that would be mutual beneficial. Then the story moves to over to another part of the dark world, where Daredevil is. He is outside a building with two ambulances, two guards standing by those ambulances, and Kingpin, Kingpin walks out. As he does, Daredevil comes out of the shadows and asks what is going on. Why Kingpin has agreed to help the people and has yet to ask for anything in return. Kingpin then reminds Daredevil that he did ask for something. He has to be remembered. He asked that when all was said and done, that the people remember who it was that saved them, that helped them, as he put it, this their darkest hour. Then when the talk is over, Kingpin walks off singing the tune of tomorrow. Yes, the Annie song. We transition back to that place we know little of yet, and as the skull promised, it is indeed Steve Rogers turn as he hangs upside down watching while Red Skull consumes what can only we can only assume is Steve Rogers friend. Red Skull starts to ask if he really doesn't know who he the Red Skull is and when Steve, an Steve answers the Red Skull only replies that he is the one who put him here and in actuality they put each other here which prompts Steve Rogers to ask where is here and the Red Skull says that here is hell. He also tells Steve that he is the only one that can get Steve Rogers out of there. However, the only way to do this is to do that death. He then takes a branch from the fire he used he has lit and, and scorches the end. He puts it to Steve Rogers' chest. Next, we transition over to the Red Room where Nadia the Wasp is screaming of how she has had enough. How things were supposed to be that they were going there to try to talk sense into Black Widow, but instead, 
have been doing everything under the sun for Black Widow, bending to Black Widow's every wish, interrogating, torturing, even kidnapping. She talks about how she was made a killer once, and she won't do it again. Riri and the others try to talk sense into Nadia, but it is Spider-Man who finally says to give him one more night, he will talk to Black Widow and try to get things smoothed over. He walks off and goes to talk to Black Widow. Spider-Man tells Black Widow about Nadia, and Black Widow knows. He tells her if she would only let them in on details instead of always giving orders, then keeping them at arm's length. Rather than keeping them at arm's length. She says no, says that the red room is about giving and following orders. Nothing more. Uh, she says that it is because of her generation they are in this mess, and that her gift to them is teaching them how to survive what's to come. Spider-Man then tries to give hope to the possibility that Stark, through the intel of Rick, Rick Jones, uh, may be right in collecting the cube fragments and the hope that they have uh, in collecting the cube fragments. It then transitions to the mount where a halt where a hydro assault is taking place. Uh, uh, Stark tells the others they have nothing to worry about uh, as they have the best security in place. The only thing he says is he knows that they may be past all the they may get past all that cause there is someone among them who is Hydra. First, the blame is put on Quicksilver, as he keeps saying that the only reason he is in this is because he wants to keep his sister to help his sister, who is being taken over by Hydra. Then the blame is put on Marking Bird, who has been making, making secret phone calls. Who, it turns out, is not to Hydra, but to Maria Hill. Finally, a starting match ensues, and Ant-Man says it was him. He found out that Ant-Man did it because they found his daughter in France, and he had no other choice. Uh, the next transition is to the room where Banner is being held. Captain Hydra is talking, talking about all the things these heroes who swore to be his friends have done to him, how they have shot him, and uh, have done to him, how they have shot him into space, how they have put an arrow through his head, and when Cap is done, Banner says, nope won't do it. He won't help Cap fight against those Banner calls his friends. Then it is revealed that Cap wasn't speaking to Banner, he was speaking to the Hulk. With all that security, they hadn't counted on one thing. They hadn't counted on the Hulk. They had guarded themselves against the Odinson's and Scarlet Witch's attacks, but they hadn't counted on the Hulk. And because of this, he tore through the outer core of the ship, ripping into it like slicing through bread with a hot butter knife. Some were ready to give up, but the others weren't. So much so, they reminded others that they may that this may be what they deserve as heroes, but the people, the civilians, didn't deserve it. Fight breaks out, then Cap fights with Tony, finally knocking Tony to the ground, standing over him with his, his cap shield with his shield in hand, gets ready to plunge it into Tony's Iron Man suit, saying he knows it's really Tony in there, because Arnold Zola told him that Tony had put his actual consciousness 
in there. Then Tony says, starts to give his apologies. But as he does, Madame Hydra banishes Cap away. The last scene is back in the red, red room. Black Widow watches the breaking news report of the attack and how there are no survivors reported. She then wakes everybody up and says it's time to go. It's time to kill the cat. As I say at the end of every video, I hope you've enjoyed. If you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, watch and enjoy. I'll see you on the other side.